Good morning, y'all. Um, so I have a good amount of adoption in my family. And growing up, I always wanted to adopt. And I imagined my picture-perfect family with adopted children and biological children. Um, and I think it's really sweet that God lets us plan things. Um, but when I was 16, I was diagnosed with my first cancer. It was ALL leukemia, and I was on treatment for about three years. Um, one week after my last chemo appointment for my first cancer, I was diagnosed with my second cancer, which was AML leukemia, for which I had a bone marrow transplant. Um, after my bone marrow transplant, uh, which requires high levels of full body radiation, I was told that I had lost all reproductive function and I was barren. And that is a very heavy word. And that word was crushing me. Um, and I just felt this deep grief and loss. Um, <clears throat> and I did not anticipate how much I would have to mourn that. Um, and I also did not anticipate the insecurities that came along with that because now I was questioning my worth as a woman, my worth as a future wife. Um, and so about a year after my bone marrow transplant, I was on my third date with this handsome man. And um, I wanted to be really upfront about that. And so I told Danny, I, I'm going to tell you something, and I really want you to think about this. Like, take a few days and really mull it over. But I cannot have biological kids. My plan is to adopt. Um, and I want you to know that now and think about it. Um, and it's hard to capture the eloquence of the moment because almost instantly Danny said, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> so <laughs> I took him at his word and a few years into our marriage, we started looking into adoption options and we had briefly looked into IVF because I did have some eggs frozen in between my two cancers. But my endocrinologist from my, BM, my uh, bone marrow transplant had told me that the chances of me getting pregnant and holding a baby to term were very low because I had what he called a hostile uterus, which I guess is a war zone in there. So um, we moved right back into adoption. And shortly after that, I got a message on my Facebook account from Megan Frederick. And I didn't know Megan well at the time. She was just that cool girl at the front that had like the blue hair. Um, and her message said, I hope this isn't weird, but I really feel like the Lord is calling me to be a surrogate for you. Um, that's a big offer, right? And I have a hard enough time letting somebody buy me lunch. <laughs> and so uh, I told Megan, you know, we won't be able to pay you what you could make going through an agency. Like, we just can't offer that for you. And um, she said, you know, that's okay. This was free. So... Um, after a lot of prayer and a lot of conversations, um, we moved forward with the process. And we really felt like this was what God's plan was for our family. Everything fell into place financially, relationally, legally, everything. Um, and so we went through the whole process and we got to the transfer date. We had one little embryo. And we did the transfer, and then um, Megan didn't get pregnant. And it was a very abrupt and stern no from God. And it felt like the, the ground below me just started to crumble away again. And it was, I felt like I was falling into that loss again and mourning it all over again because I had opened a door that had been closed already. Um, and it was very hard for our family, and it was very hard for the Fredericks as, as well. And there were moments in the middle of the night where it's just me, and I'm feeling that pain. It's real, and that loss is real, and that grief feels like it's swallowing. It felt like it was swallowing me whole. And only in those moments did I find, well, I found rest only in Christ. Like, God gave me comfort and peace in those moments that he has me. And I will tell you that people say time heals all wounds, and it doesn't. Christ is the only one that can heal your wounds. And, and that's the truth of the matter. 
And so um, not, not too long after that, we were at a wedding, and we were actually talking to Pastor Brandon about adoption options, and he was encouraging us to really consider foster adopt. And I did not want to do foster adopt. I did not think that my heart could handle another loss. And that wasn't my only fear. I had so many accumulating fears, and I was really afraid that what if this child doesn't love me? What if we get a child that doesn't want to hug me, doesn't want to be my child? And um, I really opened up my heart, and I really prayed, like, all right, Lord, like, I want my desires to be your desires. And I, like, these fears are crippling. And um, God really spoke to me in that, that he is my provider. He is the one that I should be getting all my needs met through, not, not the child. I should not put that on another human being. Um, and now my job is to lavish the love that God's poured onto me onto a child. Um, and so we moved forward. We got uh, home study approved in August of 2018. And in October, I got a call at work on my lunch break saying that there was a 15-month-old boy looking for his forever home. Um, and then she went on to list all the warning signs and red flags that had been reported about this boy's behavior and about his personality and how he was in his last foster placement. And I won't go into detail about what was on that list because that's Quinn's story. Um, but I will tell you it was very intimidating. Um, and so I called Danny and we were on the same page. We said yes and we prayed that God would open the doors that need to be opened and close the doors that need to be closed. And we said yes. And um, in order for this boy to be placed in our home, his social worker has to choose us from a pool of other families that also said yes. So we got a call later that Friday, and um, we were told that we, would, we had been chosen and that they wanted to place him in our home quickly. And I thought quickly was like two or three weeks. It was one week. Um, and that week was crazy. We prepared our house for a baby, and um, I think on Wednesday of that week, I realized that we won't have any alone time anymore. And so I had a mini meltdown, but um, that Friday morning came, and we walked into the county building, and they literally gave us a baby. We were not qualified. Uh, well, I mean, legally we were, but um, being a mom is totally new to me. And so um, we walked out with, with Quinn, and I know there's a picture there's one of us holding him where he's kind of pushing us away. That's when we picked him up. That one. You can see it in his face. <laughs> um, but the moment we put him in the car, he was giggling and smiling and playing with us. And it was, it was totally not the baby that they had described to me. I was like, Danny, are you sure they gave us the right one? Because he's really happy. Um, and I will, I will say, though, like the transition from... Being the two of us to the three of us was hard. Bonding did not look how I thought it would look. Um, and I think I cried every day for at least the first month. Um, but I can tell you that his giggles and his love and his kisses and him calling me mommy has healed so much of my heart that could not have been healed in any other way. And had I let fear... Had I let my fears hold me captive, I would not be up here sharing this. Um, and I, I don't think it's a coincidence that we are sharing today on Baby Dedication Day, because we were actually supposed to share a different weekend. But for years, when Danny and I were coming here, Baby Dedication Day was painful for me, because I didn't know if we'd ever be up here. And now we're, we're sharing our victory on the same day that we are praying for other families to be dedicated. which just shows God is faithful. And just like we were singing earlier too, uh, you make me brave, no fear can hinder now the promises you've made. Like here we are, we're a testament to that. And so um, I'll let Danny talk now. <laughs> just real quick. So just kind of going back to the circus thing, when, when the idea that was brought up to me, I, my immediate reaction was no. I always operate out of a place of fear and I, I don't like to move, I don't like to be uncomfortable. So just the thought of what that entanglement would be like and the awkwardness involved in it, 
Um, I just, I wasn't ready for it. But as we talked to the Fredericks more and we started praying, um, I felt God tell me that this was the direction he was leading our families. Um, in fact, the decision to move forward with the surrogacy was the one thing in my life that I felt most sure God was leading me towards more than anything, more than my professional Mormon marriage. I felt such a strong yes from God that this was where we were going next. Um, so the day that I found out that um, the implantation hadn't worked, I got the call from the doctor. Um, I just found out that the surrogacy was over and our attempt at biological children was done. I felt the deepest sense of um, emptiness and disappointment I've ever felt in my life. Uh, I remember going into work that night and just standing in front of my locker and just trying to put my vest on. And I physically like couldn't move. I couldn't move my arms. I couldn't move my head. I remember I asked God, why would he bring us to this place when he knew the answer was no? And then what was able to pull me out of that was I began to sing a song. It's by Amanda Cook. Uh, the chorus goes that you taught my feet to dance on disappointment. So I began to worship my sorrow, and I found peace. I began to remember the faithfulness of God and how his goodness was teaching me to rise above disappointment and failure into victory. So what I've learned from this experience is that God's path for us is not a straight line. Uh, he leads us all the way to the left if he's taking us to the right, you know. Our surrogacy experience with the Fredericks taught me what it means to have closeness as a family, what it means to give of yourself to those of you love, and it taught me to follow God's leadings into the unknown and the uncertain. And it was this that prepared my heart for adoption. If I hadn't had that experience, I wouldn't have been able to adopt. I wouldn't have said no to adoption 20 times probably. Um, if I went back in time and was presented with the opportunity to do surrogacy with the Fredericks again, knowing that the, it would, the result would be negative every time, I would say yes every single time. Uh, it's taught me the meaning of uh, bringing beauty from ashes and has prepared my heart for adoption and has opened the door to the greatest season of joy I've ever known in my life. So I just want to say, don't let fear le lead your life. God's greater than our fears. One thing um, that I really love about The Rock is that there are so many adoptive families. Um, and if you really, if you feel like the Lord is stirring your heart to come to adoption, no matter what kind of adoption, or you're curious about the process, or you have fears that you want to come talk about in a non-judgmental community group, we are rolling out here at The Rock a foster adoptive community. And our next meeting will actually be March 12th. It's a Thursday. Um, and I'm sure you'll hear more, hear more about that in the announcements. Um, but yeah. <laughs> All right, let's stand together one more time. You guys are so good. Up and down. Give it up for Danny and Crystal. Let's stay standing. We're going to pray. You know what I love about this, this journey, again, stay standing, is uh, I've seen them walk through this journey. You know, one of the first battles was, was, was with Krista's health and praying through that. Then also said, okay, Holy Spirit, what does this adoption journey look like in the midst of uh, surrogacy not working out how we had hoped? And I've just been so proud of your guys' responses. And um, I think for you, Danny, seeing you're at a tough guy job, you know, <laughs> working for the police department. Um, but letting your heart stay tender to the Lord has been amazing and watching that example. And so for us this morning, let's just close our eyes as we pray. Holy Spirit, we just thank you that you are present, that you are active. As we studied today about what kingdom looks like in our life, Lord, redeeming the mundane places, we just ask God for this kingdom moment. We say yes to what you're calling us to. Just again, with eyes closed, you say, you know what? I felt an invitation of the Lord to step out in faith in something, but I've been afraid. I've let fear come in, and I've not said yes to what God's asking me to do. If that's you, just lift your hand up right now if that's you. Father, we declare faith to step and move forward in the places you've called us to, to not be afraid or limited by the fears around us. And God, we ask for the ability and boldness to step forward, to have conversations we've needed to have. But we also pray for those that are in the middle of infertility. This is eyes closed. This is sensitive, but even in a place you're saying, you know what, we've, we've been trying to get pregnant and have not. If that's you, just lift your hand up right now. Father, we declare healing over the womb in Jesus' name. Healing over the womb right now. 
where fear has settled in and try to take away the hope and the joy that they've been experiencing. Maybe miscarriages we ask around right now for healing. Where there's been miscarriages, they come and restore the places of trauma, Holy Spirit. God, we pray for those adoptive families that are here, that are in the process of adoption, journey of adoption. And it gets hard. It gets difficult where funding has not come in. God, we ask right now for your provision, Holy Spirit. We pray for provision in every front, if it's private adoption or foster adoption. God, that you would provide every dime and dollar that is needed. And you would place healthy placements with healthy attachment where there's been disruption in the attachment. God, we ask right now for healthy family structure to be formed. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I have Kristen and Danny pray. Dearest Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you so much for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you that you are our ultimate healer, God, and that you are a provider. Lord, and I just pray um, that today you would just be breaking off the chains of the lies that we have made agreement with, Lord, and that you would just be replacing them with the truth of who you are and who we are in you, God. And I pray that we would be able to trust in you, um, no matter what that plan looks like, God, that we would just be leaning into you for guidance and discernment, Lord, and I pray that your hand of favor would be on us, Lord, and I just pray that there would be unity in homes and healing in hearts, God, um, and I pray that you would just be stirring hearts to adopt, God, that um, there would no, be no fear in that, Lord. That's right. God, I just reiterate that, God, that you would just move us past fear, God, that you would just cast out all fear with your perfect love, God. You would give us boldness. You would give us understanding of where you want us to go, what you want us to lead us to. And God, we would not let fear control our lives, God. Just proclaim your love over that in your name. Let's invite our prayer team forward as we want to make prayer available for anybody here that needs healing, that needs help. You want to learn what it means to give your life to Jesus and be a disciple of him. Father, we just thank you again for the words that were spoken today. We thank you that your kingdom has come, your will. We ask for it to be done on earth as it is in heaven. We ask, Holy Spirit, as we go back, to our regular nine to five tomorrow we wake up and it's the same routine of getting the kids ready for school or maybe we're in the stage of retirement asking what's next holy spirit we thank you there's an invitation a kingdom calling that's present we say yes to all that you have for us in jesus name everybody said amen amen give it up for danny crystal one more time amazing job awesome